Yeah. Well. Take a look at Apple. Uh, where are they? Well, look, basically unchanged. I mean, you're up a mm. buck. OK, uh, that's one percent at one hundred and eleven. I want to get back to the new products that they introduced. And joining us is an Apple fan. His name is Robert Enderley. He likes Apple. He thinks it's a great company and great products. But, Rob, I'm going to come at you with two negatives. Number one, the stylus which Steve Jobs absolutely hated. And secondly, <laughs> the battery on the new phones is said to be 5% less capable. Two negatives. How do you get over those? Well, the, with, the, with regard to the battery first, I don't think users are going to care a whole heck of a lot about that as long as the phone is attractive and does what they want it to do. Uh, remember the S series of any Apple product is the one where they try to fix all the problems with the initial <laughs> series. So the big things with this phone is better screen, better camera, and it's not going to bend into, into a U if you put it, put it into your back pocket, okay. which is probably a big change. <laughs> okay. uh, with, re with regard to the uh, iPad Pro, I remember they did a partnership with Cisco and uh, IBM to move some kind of enterprise product through their channels. This is that product. They had to have something that would do forms. The, the size of this is to do forms. Now, the issue, of course, is form-based products aren't really high volume offerings, but they were concerned that Microsoft Surface was coming in and stealing that opportunity. And of course, we saw iPad volumes drop year over year, and that's been a problem. And so they're going to attempt to turn it around with this. I'm not convinced it's going to work primarily because, as I say, the form-based products, they do sell well in their segments, but not at the volumes that we're used to seeing with iPads. And so it may offset a bit the declines, but it shouldn't offset it fully. Okay, what I'm looking at, when I saw that presentation, I thought, here's Tim Cook lining up a terrific Christmas selling season. Because we're all going to run out and get the new 6S. I mean, I can see that coming a mile off. Mm -hmm. The Apple TV, that looks like a pretty good deal. And this bigger iPad, I can see how that would be attractive. I think he's just building up big sales in the future, as opposed to a stock pop in the immediate present. What what do you say? Well, it may work that way with the iPhone and the Apple TV. The, as I say, the, the large iPad is really positioned against a business opportunity, and that opportunity isn't, isn't cyclical based on Christmas. So unless they wrap some other stuff around it, for instance, it would be a great product for folks that want to create art, much better because the stylus is much more accurate. If they do something like that, they could probably create some buzz on it for Christmas. But right now, it's got too much of a business focus. And of course, they're going to have to resolve the conflict between the, the uh, MacBook Air and this large iPad. They both hit that same kind you know, of demographic Rob, where they want something light they can work on. For, for an, I thought you were an Apple fan. You sound a little disappointed yesterday. You got 30 seconds. Well, this is actually what I expected them to bring out. Uh, Tim Cook isn't the big bang guy that Steve Jobs was. He did what he had to do. That's pretty much what he, he accomplished. But Apple lives on a lot of hype, and we're really seeing the new Apple, which doesn't have that hype. And trust me, if, calling me an Apple fan, a lot of people probably croaked as they watched this particular uh, particular <laughs> program. And that has not been my uh, my oh. reputation. Okay. Well, thanks. Honesty in the last sentence you utter. That's very good. Rob <laughs> Enderlin, <laughs> thank you very much. Indeed. Come back again. We want to hear more about Apple from you in particular. Thanks, Rob. I'll look forward to it. Welcome.